grace and peace in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yahshua the Messiah. To the elect across the earth, we love y'all so much. Welcome back to the dinner table. Saints, this is a very urgent message as I believe it has a prophetic warning about a, a principality that is really manifesting throughout the land. And I don't think a lot of believers are paying attention. So as you know, I'm the servant of the Lord. I'm going to serve you this amazing meal in warning from the almighty king of the kitchen, Jesus Christ. He loves to cook food for us. He loves to feed us. He loves to give us healthy meals that will keep us strong through the time, through the hour to come. Okay. And as you know, all right, because it's so urgent, we just going to say he's the chef of all chefs. Can I get an amen? But I need to hurry up and get this to you, okay? So let me go get your plate. You already know the Lord is my shepherd plate just for you, okay? Love, ooh, let me, love you, love you, okay? It's good to have you back at the dinner table. And you know by now, I'm that waiter that's going to be eating with the customer. <laughs> but listen, let's go ahead and pray. To get washed in the blood and wash our hands so we could break this bread and eat together, okay? Say this with me, Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me of all sins. Wash me in your holy blood. I forgive all my enemies. Lord, may I have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Help me to focus and receive your word and walk in it. May your word be a light unto my feet, health to my bones to convict me, correct me, encourage me. Faith comes by the hearing of the word of the Lord. Jesus, destroy every power of darkness, every force of evil, everything Satan could try to send against me to hinder my walk with you and to hinder me receiving your word. Break it in Jesus Christ's name, anything unclean. I love you, Lord, and I thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So, saints of God, obviously you know we're getting prepared, Lord willing, for the conference this weekend. And as busy as, as we have been, I had to preach this message, okay? This is urgent, all right? A uh, couple of announcements. As you know, any videos that uh, YouTube or other platforms won't allow because of the Antichrist spirit, it will be directly on our website. So, make sure you visit that frequently. And we do have a backup YouTube channel. We do have a couple other platforms that will be in the description box. Don't be foolish. It takes literally five minutes to subscribe to all of them. Don't push it off and be lazy. It's just a click of a button, saints. So that way you have a plan B in motion. We believe and trust that God will keep this channel as long as he sees fit. The devil can't do nothing unless Christ allows him. So we want to keep this main channel up and we want to be wise how we do things, okay? However, it's good to be prudent. So subscribe to those other channels and more importantly, visit the website frequently as we will let you know when we upload videos that expose the enemy's plans, the beast system, and of course, the mark of the beast. Saints, it's going to get to a time... Where it's not just YouTubers they're taking down. They're now starting to take websites off of, uh, you know, uh, hosting companies. And listen, it's going to get to the point where just talking about the book of Revelations and talking about the mark of the beast will have people taken down. Because that Antichrist spirit is rising on the lands. But... The gospel of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of Christ is also here to combat the enemy. And we know what side we're on. Praise the Messiah. So saints, I wanted to give that announcement, okay, just so you are aware. All right. And we thank everybody that is in the fight with us. We love y'all so much. But I want to get straight to this message. I hope you got a pen and a pad and of course your Bible. I want you to write this down. A friend called Envy. A friend called Envy. Also frenemies. Okay, we're going to breeze through these. I, I want to strategically shorten this video. Hopefully shorter than I do normal videos so that way it can spread faster. What exactly is Envy? What does the Bible speak of with Envy? 
Well, what is the character of envy? What causes envy? What does envy create in the process of somebody stumbling in it? These are the things that we're going to go over right here and right now. And I want to say, Lord Jesus, speak through me. I give you all the glory and the praise. I'm nothing without you, Lord. I am your servant. And you make these meals for me to feed your people. I thank you, Lord. May it be a living word for them. To cause them to get closer to you and to be aware of the enemy's plans. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Saints, the principality of envy has been commissioned by the Antichrist, by the enemy, by Lucifer. And you got to understand something. The demons underneath that operate for principalities are reinforced and strengthened by the principality. Understand this. So the demons rely on supply, communication. You understand? A supply line from the heavenly realm. So this principality of envy has demons all over the place. And there has been a great increase of envy. In the original Greek language, like if we go to Matthew 27, for example, we're going to go to it after, but when envy is mentioned in that chapter, that is the word, and I'll spell it, P-H-T-H-O-N-O-S, but you could say it's like faunos, right? And it literally means to be resentful that someone has something the other person wants. It's a sin of jealousy over blessings or achievements of others, right? And it can get to the point where sometimes the people that admire someone can actually become their worst enemy because envy starts to grow. So we want to dive right into this. The foundational scripture that we're going to go over is in Proverbs 27 verse 4. But the one thing you have to realize, okay... If you look around, especially if you don't wear a mask, if you're in a place where it's not mandatory and you don't volunteer to wear it, you don't volunteer, you don't volunteer to wear it. You see what I'm saying? And other people want to wear it everywhere they go because they're fearful and unbelieving. Remember, the Bible says the lake of fire, the first two groups of people that are cast in are the fearful and the unbelieving. Do you think that's a coincidence? When you choose not to wear a mask, okay, now whether you do or not, the, the mask is not the mark of the beast. It's a preconditioning, okay? So I'm not going to speak too much on that just to be safe for the video's sake. But there is envy with people, even Christians that are bound by fear, when they see you and I having no fear. Now, whether that is some of us had to overcome and realize, like, you know, there's a process to holiness. There's a process to... Uh, faith, everything can grow and have measurement. But the reality is, do you notice the eyes of people when they see you not afraid? Or maybe you're not wearing a mask because certain places don't require it, but they want to wear it because they f they're they they're afraid. They're, they're, they're allowing the deception to take place in their life, forgetting that Christ is faithful to protect. Their eyes show envy. And this is what you have to realize. This is what God has put on me that's so important for you to know. There is envy because they don't have your freedom in the Lord. They're afraid and you're not. They believe the enemy and you're believing in the Lord. They trust in certain things to protect them, if you know what I mean. Your trust is in the Lord. Not that you're foolish. You put a seatbelt on. Do, do I accuse you of not trusting God because you're wearing a seatbelt? That's the same way you want to treat others who are not on the same faith level with you, who may be afraid, who wear a mask. Don't put them down. Love them. Pray for them and encourage them and show them scriptures on love because perfect love cast out fear. You got to support the weak and be patient and, and comfort the feeble minded. Be patient with all men. So anyways, this principality of envy is a, it's almost like a birthing unit. Envy births hatred and ultimately can birth murder. You see? So I'm going to go through a list of different areas Envy took place 
And for the time's sake, because I, like I'm saying, I'm trying to shorten this video so it, people can watch it as quick as possible. I'm going to give a few testimonies of examples of envy that has happened to my wife and I with people. And then I'm going to warn you about things to come and as the Lord leads, okay? So, and then of course, there's some amazing revelations that God has revealed that's going to convict those that are struggling with envy or jealousy towards anybody. The first thing I want you to know is that you're greatly loved and that God made us all individually unique. Never will make any one of us ever again. Even identical triplets are not the same. They may look the same, but they're very unique in personality and likes and dislikes. It, regardless, the Lord loves you so much that when he made you, he took a step back and said, I'll never make another one of you. So why get jealous or envious over someone else's success or someone else's gifts that God has chosen to give her? God has chosen to give that to him. And if you would stop being so busy, being envious of other people and jealous, you would actually be able to take time to seek the Lord and see what he got for you. And as you grow and mature, you learn to celebrate other people's blessings that are in the Lord, right? Now, where does envy originate from? Well, what if I told you that the reason why the principality of envy has been released and I'm telling you, all the masses that are subservient right now and falling for the lie and lining up to receive the mark of the beast, they have envy because they know, their spirit man knows this is slavery. And here you are walking free under the blood of the lamb and it makes them so angry. Now, why do you think they're so vicious? They'll yell at people, put on a mask, and, and all of these things. Saints of God, what if I told you that Lucifer envied and envies Jesus Christ? Why do you think he wants to be like the Most High? Why do you think there is the Antichrist, the replacement of Christ, and one of the biggest red flags? Now I'm going to talk about envy when it attacks marriages, people that try to envy over your spouse. Envy over uh, just uh, one woman being able to have children and another woman can't. Envy over uh, gifts in the church and how others will be jealous and envious because they don't have and they want what that person has. All different types of envy. So let's get right into it, okay? First off, you can write a lot of these I'm going to have you write down. You read it on your own time. Always test the spirit, right? You read it on your own time. And then I'm going to paraphrase a lot of this because, you know, the word is, is already in me to know what the scripture says. So I'll paraphrase it. Thanks be to Christ, who I give all glory to. And if you go to Genesis chapter 26, verse 14, you will see the Philistines envying Jacob. Okay, and I'd like to foreshadow that as a type of Pharisee envying Christ, but we're going to get into that later. Okay, write that one down. You can read that on your own time. Now, the first type of envy I want to talk about is very important is when Rachel envied her sister. And you can write down the scripture is Genesis 30. Okay, read, read a good chunk of that chapter, but Rachel Seeing her sister fruitful, and, she, and it says that she envied, and she got so angry, she told her husband, give me children, lest I die. Her tongue became loose and reckless because of envy. And I want you to write down these PowerPoints. I'm telling you, this message is no joke. Some of y'all are like, wow. I really needed this message. That's because the Holy Ghost loves you. And when he tells us in this ministry what to feed y'all is because he knows what you need in the season you need it. Come on, give a, give a hallelujah to Jesus real quick. Amen. So Rachel envied her sister because she was fruitful. Ladies, now whether you are a woman that's very fruitful, you got multiple children, consider women when they come around you. Pay attention. One thing you got to ask the Lord for is discernment. 
You got to be able to discern if somebody's envious around you or jealous because, A, you want to pray for them and approach them with love. A lot of times love comes before the rebuke, okay? Not all the time. But you want to see them delivered. You don't want to get personally offended if somebody's envious of something that you have or something that you can do that they can't like have children. Be considerate. Think of how that woman feels. She's been trying to have children. The only time she started to get pregnant, she had a miscarriage. And she sees you with four children and one on the way. And she says to your face, wow, wow, you got another one coming? But in her heart is growing colder because she's already becoming angry with God. And that envy is starting to grow in her towards you. Or vice versa, you might be that woman struggling with envy when you see all these happy mothers everywhere. And you're like, what is this? Sister, get it out of your heart and don't get angry with God. There's a reason for everything. Humble yourself. Now, the foundational scripture we're going to go to is Proverbs 27. Like I said, we got to be pretty quick. I, I'm really hoping to get this video done swiftly, okay? Proverbs 27. This is so powerful. I want you to see this. Okay, and you're going to go to verse 4 with me. Thank you, Lord. It says, Wrath is cruel, and anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Who can stand against envy? This right here, a lot of people don't understand it. But when you walk in the Spirit, you know, God will reveal things. He reveals things to His servants. Just serve the Lord. That's why I call myself the servant. I sacrificed that name on the altar and God gave me the servant. And I love it. Because in truth, my wife and I serve. So it fits me well. And I'm very grateful for it. But if you serve, God will reveal things to you when you serve him. This is talking about, okay, wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous. Now, the, the thing about wrath and anger is they'll let you know when they don't like you. They don't pretend. They don't hide. You know they don't like you. It's like when you in the world, sister, those women in the corner of the club gave you those eyes and they gave you that attitude when they walked by you. They let you know, I don't like you. Brother, you knew what it was like when that guy or those group of men was around. They was like the wrath and the anger because they were they were not pretending with you. They wanted to fight. They let you know, like me and you, we ain't cool. Don't look at me. Don't come my way or it's on. But the problem with envy, the reason it says who could stand against envy is because envy will come around with a hug. Uh, that... Aren't, yo, walkaways, if you're new to the channel, we do a lot of walkaways, but because of the severity of the message, I'm going to try my best to hold back at, at least half of the walkaways, but that's no joke, that's a walkaway, because so many of y'all are like already receiving a healing and a blessing from this word from the Lord, because there have been people that came into your life, now there's two ways this happens. Either people intentionally come in with envy already and they got a motive to try to destroy you or wound you. And then there's other people that come in and it's a normal relationship. But as they grow, they start getting jealous or envious of some gift you have or something you do or something you have. Whether it's your marriage, whether it's your gift to heal or gift to preach or whatever it is or maybe music. Right. And that envy grows in them and it and it it'll mutate into other things. And we're going to talk about that. So the first one that's very important is to know is that Proverbs 27 is warning you that envy will hug you and kiss you on the cheek. Remember, the Lord himself said they bless me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. He says they bless me outwardly, but inwardly they curse me, he says. Could you imagine that? And, you know, Jesus perceived all the hearts of men. He knew what was in men. He knew thoughts. He could read your mind. It's far more things about the mighty Messiah that people don't know about. But yet, <laughs> let me not get there so fast now. So that one I want you to meditate on. Envy can be because of someone else's blessings to be fruitful. And that's men too. You know, men can get envious of another father. And that can birth into very bad things. There are cases of murder and kidnapping, 
all type of hatred because of someone who couldn't have children and they hated a certain person because of envy, because it wasn't confessed before, Lord. And it, because it wasn't confessed before the Lord and they didn't repent, it grew like a, like a poisonous plant within them. But notice she spoke rest, recklessly and, and spoke with a loose tongue. If you read 1 Peter chapter 2, very interesting, okay? Because in 1 Peter chapter 2, watch what it says now in verse 1. Let me get there, okay? You might already be there. In the mighty name of Yeshua, it says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies, and what? Envies and all evil speakings. Pay attention to the order. These people of God who are moved by the Holy Ghost who wrote these books and letters. Notice the order he says that after envy is evil speaking. She had envy. She started to speak evil and out of hatred and spite. A lot of people that are envious towards you brother or sister. Eventually they're going to speak evil of you even when they know they're lying. Even when, or they'll stretch something that's partially true and Shine it in a certain light to make you look bad because they're envious of how you walk as a person of God. Make no mistake about it. Second Timothy chapter three is outlined about the last days. Read it. They despise those that are good. But what is that in them that makes them despise? Envy. Envy. What is it that made the Pharisees hate Christ? Envy. We're going to go through this. Watch. Darkness. Envies the light. Lucifer envies the Messiah and even us. Oh, this is amazing. Joseph's brothers. <laughs> Could you imagine this? I want you to write Genesis chapter 37, 11. And like I said, I think it's wiser to do it this way. Have mercy on me. Let's do it this way for this dinner table message. You know we do a lot of reading. But I want you to read on your own time. But in... Genesis, you got to understand that Joseph was greatly favored, anointed, and favored not only by the Almighty, but favored by his father, greatly loved. Remember, he gave him a coat of many colors, but he also called Joseph to be kind of like a leader and an enforcer for his other brothers, you know, the 12 patriarchs. And they got so angry. And they got envious of him. It says in Genesis chapter 37, 11, they envied Joseph. Oh, come on. Come on. Let, come on. We're going to have a conversation now. Oh, we got to at least do the fist bump of peace now. Come on. Nah. Let's do it, saints. Come on, brothers and sisters. They were so envious. It mutated into murder. They wanted to murder him. They threw him down into the well. And ended up selling them off into slavery. But my question to you is this. Think about this as a foreshadow of us. Sister, brother. There are so many of you out there that have been victim. By people that were envious of you. And let me show you something now. Because trust me, my wife and I have gone through it a lot. you got to remember, 20 years of ministry. And although we're so grateful for so much fruit, so many people that are still saved, hallelujah. But we do have testimonies through the years. Think of Paul the Apostle, how many times he was betrayed by brethren. They, they fell, people that fell away after he labored for them. And people that became his enemy. Because of envy and hatred and they wanted to go back to the world. They hated him bringing correction to them. Saints, it's no different. If you ever read, listen, I know there's a lot of like pastors and um, shepherds out there that found out about this ministry. And you happen to have your own ministry that God has called you. I'm talking about real people that are actually called by God, not novices that just think they could start a, a ministry. But for y'all out there, I'm grateful that. You're humble enough to be a part of this ministry and not let it conflict with your ministry and who you are as a teacher for whatever flock you have. And I pray they're doing well. But my calling and this ministry's calling in Jesus Christ's name is to strengthen leadership. OK, I give you you pastors and ministers and you guys go through a lot. People don't understand what you, you guys go through. 
you get betrayed a lot. Uh, you know, with local congregation, it's not the same. Because <laughs> there was times Paul almost lost everybody at times. It happens, saints, because that that spirit spreads in people. Envy and jealousy and rebellion. They don't want leadership. They don't want to be corrected and so on and so forth. But for you leaders out there, this is very important. And for you growing leaders in this ministry, uh, we are tremendously, my wife and I are so grateful for y'all. This is very important for you. This is a very helpful tool. And for all of y'all, okay, because you can be a victim. Envy can come in many different ways. Okay, not only to try to attack, but try to use through people. Now, the reason I brought up the leaders um, from other ministries and also a lot, all y'all brothers and sisters that love the Lord and you love righteousness and you hate when other Christians do evil. And here you are called by the father in heaven, just like Joseph was called by his father and you go forth. Just simply to warn other believers, hey, you're not supposed to be smoking cigarettes. Hey, brother, you're not supposed to be lying all the time. Hey, sister, you're not supposed to be gossiping. You're not supposed to be doing those things. And just like Joseph's brothers, instead of them just respecting that their father, there was a reason why he assigned Joseph. Because Joseph, if you really want to know a mystery, did you know that Joseph is the closest person character wise to Jesus? In the Old Testament, wow, that would have been a walk away. I'm not, I'm not going to get into that mystery. We don't have time for that. But they envied Joseph because he was a man of integrity, a young man of integrity. I, I kind of look at Joseph like you see Timothy. Timothy was despised by older Christians. That's why Paul had to tell him, don't be afraid. And you're not supposed to despise the young, the youth. Paul had to encourage Timothy. Timothy, do what I tell you to do. They can be envious of you because I have favor on you, but there's a reason I have favor on you. Paul had favor on Timothy because he loved the Lord. Timothy hated evil and he loved righteousness. And he didn't care if you were three times his age. He would show you the word of God where you were wrong with love. And if so, a rod or in boldness. Now, you as a form of a Joseph sister or brother, you simply innocently Want to bring a correction to another so-called Christian. Remember, the Bible says if any be called a brother and they be a fornicator, an adulteress, an idolater, a drunkard or whatever the case be. It says don't even eat with them. Brother means they're in the Lord. Now watch this. Just as the brothers got so envious with Joseph, they wanted to kill him or sell him off. I'm telling you, this message is prophetically warning you. There's a lot of religious Christians lukewarm Christians or halfway Christians, they hate it when you correct them. Even though you're doing it in a place of love like Joseph did, they're planning how to throw you in a well and how to assassinate you. Maybe to assassinate your character. Maybe not literally murder you. God forbid, but sometimes that happens. But they want to murder your reputation by lying about you. Or, listen to this, when the mark of the beast in the stamp is fully implemented and Lucifer's light is implemented, all the Christians that were deceived to take the mark by false uh, wolves in sheep's clothing shepherds, they're going to envy you because they're going to know inside God has withdrawn from them. And that's why they're going to be ready to murder the true believers out of envy. You won't take the mark. It's not the mark. This ain't the mark. All these shepherds told me it wasn't the mark. And you think you're all that. And the anger is going to turn into murder. Um. Wow. Such an important message, saints. Help spread this. Now... You read about Joseph, and it's so prophetic, isn't it, about us? Saints, my wife and I have gone through a lot of persecution simply being a Joseph, hypothetically speaking, in people's life that come into this ministry. Especially local is even more troubling. That's why I give a lot of credit to pastors, because local people will puff up quicker than people from a distance. You'll get more respect from people that would love 
to move and, and be close to a true ministry. But a lot of times there's people that will take ministry for granted when they're treated overly well. My wife and I, we don't play the game, saints. We've been through so much in 20 years. We literally just want to love everybody. We try to help people, not just spiritually, not just uh, deliverance through Christ and all of that. I mean, people are struggling with a bill or whatever the case be. And I'm only giving the glory to Christ. I boast in the Lord, saints. Nobody can try to accuse me. I'm, I'm trying to testify something to you. But a lot of times they become spoiled. And they get too close to leadership. They think they're buddy buddies. And then what happens is it mutates into competition and some weird thing. I'm telling you, that doesn't always happen. Okay, but I would say, if you study Paul, I mean, even Jesus, look at how many fell away from him. But if you just study Paul, I would say at least 35% fell away that he labored for. Groups literally walking away, all type of stuff that would have discouraged him, but he had the Holy Ghost. So don't be discouraged when you stand like a Joseph to bring correction to people. And instead of loving that correction, because remember, the Bible says the rebuke a righteous man and he will love thee. Rebuke a wicked, rebuke the wicked and they will despise thee. So when we have brought correction and we warn people just like most of y'all have heard me warn you, look, this ministry, it ain't the, the look, it ain't like the other one you hopped out of because a lot of people hop ministries and they play the victim card in every ministry. I, my wife and I let people know, look, this ministry, make sure you're ready for it. People that will email us, hey, we're, we're selling our house. We want to move down there. And well, hold on. Before you move down here, know that you better be able to handle real military affair in the spirit realm. You better be able to handle rebuke if you get out of line. You better be able to handle these things and not be prideful. And you better not be someone that despises authority in Christ because God assigns leadership and shepherds to watch after your soul, not to like try to take advantage of, you No, this is for your own good. And we warn people, this ministry is not a joke. This is real. We're trying to make you get to heaven. So if you're out of line, we're going to approach you. But it's good. You need, Listen, a correction ain't nothing but a step in the right direction. Amen. But you want to be a Joseph in people's lives. And instead of, they, uh, instead of the righteous loving you because you corrected them, so many of them will start despising you. Have you ever heard that saying? Everybody's hollering at the preacher when he's preaching until the message is, 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 is meant for them. Whether he knows or the, the spirit of God is just leading him to preach a word to cut them about something they're doing wrong. Then all of a sudden there's not so many hallelujahs, amens, preach it, preach it man of God and all the other shouts. It starts getting quiet in the room. I'm telling you, saints, this is real. Think about this logically. Look at how fast Satan can turn a crowd. I'll prove it. One minute, the, the crowd wanted to worship Paul and the other brother. Literally, offering up, wanted to call him Apollos and offering up animals, right? Look, look at this now. Soon as they tore their clothes and said, what are y'all doing? We are men. I, I got to take a dump like you. I'm not trying to be like, you know, but I'm just being real because sometimes people... People see the glory of God on a man or a woman of God. And yes, they are anointed. Yes, they're appointed. Yes, the Lord is with them. But don't think they don't take a dump like you. Don't think they got to overcome battles too. It doesn't mean they're on your level. Don't think you're equal just because they're human. No, they have supernatural powers. Respect them. Listen, if I was in the presence of certain men and women of God, when I was young in the Lord, I would shut my mouth and sit at the feet of Jesus in them. It's not time to compete. That, that shows pride and arrogance and all type of demons when men want to be somebody great way before they even, they even know their calling. But if you remember, they tore their clothes and what did the devil do? Turn the people to want to stone them. <laughs> one minute they want to worship him. Next minute they're ready to kill him. Don't you know one minute somebody is complimenting you, sister? The next minute she want to take your husband. Ah, come on, I'm talking to somebody. One minute the brother is saying he love you, hugging you. The next minute he want to destroy your whole life. Just like that. That's why you have to put your trust in the Lord. And the Bible says you got to guard your heart. So that way you don't get wounded. And we're going to get into that. 
Now, there's a lot of scriptures, okay? One of the biggest ones that is so big to me. If you read in 1 Corinthians 13, it says that love does not envy. That means if you're struggling with envy towards anybody, or you know somebody that has envy towards you, it is a sign they're not in love. Because if they had love in their life, and if they were walking in the love of God, Envy wouldn't be allowed to stay or it would be they would rebuke it out of themselves. Remember, the Bible says you can get unclean thoughts. Remember, he said casting down imagination. So if envy, if the principality of envy tries to attack you, sister or brother, and you hear the thought you get jealous of someone else's success or a gift God has given them, cast it down. That's all. Rebuke it. And pray for them and say, Lord, I pray they never get puffed up. I pray that you will bless their gifts even more for your glory. And Lord, show me what my gifts are. That's the mature way to handle it when you get a a thought of envy on somebody or a marriage or whatever the case be. Now, that one you need to meditate on. Because that's important. Okay? This one you could kind of put them all together. Psalm 73 verse 3. Psalms 37 uh, verse 1 and these two as well as Proverbs 24, okay? It talks about don't envy foolish people, don't envy the wicked when they prosper. And listen, a lot of us have been guilty of that. You know what I mean? Growing in the Lord. Hey, I've been in the Lord 20 years. God had to correct me with that when I was young. When I was young in the Lord and I was struggling, working with my own hands, going to work a day, providing for my wife. We didn't have children yet. You know, and I would see hustlers in the neighborhood selling drugs on Section 8 and $1,000 of food stamps. And I'm wondering how I'm going to pay the light bill. And there'd be times I'm like, this ain't right, Lord. Or if I seen like false prophets or phony Christian rappers or You know, pastors that hate God, but they're utilizing religion to, you know, take advantage of the flock. I struggled with envy and jealousy and anger early in my walk because I'm like, Lord, why are you allowing these people to prosper? Why are you allowing them to have platforms and to travel and they're not even for you? And God said, my son, get that out of your heart. I have a plan for you. I gave you a vision and I showed you that you will have a mighty ministry that's mine, says the Lord. You will just govern it. You will be a shepherd over it. But the difference is they think that's their ministry. They think that's their glory and their gifts and they have their reward. I got a wife coming to you. You're going to get married. You're going to have children. And through time, when you're ready, when you have enough experience, when you've made enough mistakes to be humble, when you've learned to appreciate, and when you've really shown yourself approved then I will give you the ministry that I have for you to watch over under me saints do you know how long that took (laughs) years God said look you're gonna start off as a trumpet in the streets and shout out to my wife when when she came into my life as a gift from God then we went into the streets to get together and then shout out to our children gift from God but we would just tell everybody to repent the antichrist is coming the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back we warn people about the mark of the beast I'm talking 20 years ago saints we would study the word for hours we would humble ourselves we would go visit church ministries and warn them and pray for the people secretly praying for them warning people publicly condemning evil when we seen it Feeding homeless. I'm I'm just giving you a testimony. God knows if I'm boasting or not. Can I share this without Pharisees in the back always trying to accuse? The thing about it is, if this was a real dinner table, the elect would be here. But this is digital. So Pharisees are allowed to creep all weird behind the bushes and just sit there with a pad waiting to find something against me. Just like they did to my master. So I, I get it. But saints of God, there are now people coming out with their own ministries 
no experience, no humiliation. They're self-willed, like the Bible said. You have to be careful who you submit under. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that because that'll take an hour. I mean, my wife and I, one day, we'd love to just do a testimony video of all we, the things we've been through and testimonies. And Lord willing, we'll do that in God's timing. So don't evil. Uh, so don't be envious when the wicked prosper and even wicked so-called Christians. Don't be envious of them. Okay? Now, because look, God was faithful to his word. Look at how far God has taken his ministry, my wife and I, and all of y'all. Can you imagine? You're part of the prophetic calling to be a mighty army for Christ in this ministry. Ha, <laughs> wow, wow. So anyways, Job chapter 5 is interesting because when you read it, it says that envy slays the silly ones. That's why, sister and brother, you can't take it lightly. When people come into your life, if you start to see changes in people, you better take it to your closet. You better pray on it and ask God what to do about this situation. And more than likely, he's going to tell you to approach that man or a woman and, and tell them you see envy and try to convince them to get it out of them. There's so many ways so many of y'all have been victim by people that struck at you because of envy. Uh, one can be, um, brother... A man is envy, envious over your marriage. He don't believe you deserve that woman. How did you get a wife that beautiful and, and that amazing? I'm better than you. I should have had her. And you you got to look for the red flags. The reason why it says envy slays the silly one is because people that are dwarfed and people that think everything is a game and everything is a joke, they don't pay attention when envy comes around because most times envy comes around with a smile and a kiss and a hug. And we're going to get into this now. A friend named Envy, a friend called Envy and Frenemies. Now, let's say that man is envious of your marriage. One red flag, and sister, this goes for you. If a woman is envious because she's been through five different baby daddies, she sees you happy with a man who actually loves you. He don't want to cheat on you. He's not on fire like super Christian, but he loves the Lord. You know what I mean? And he's growing, you know. You guys pray together. Your children are joyful. He works. He don't make a million dollars a year, but he provides. At least he lets you know, honey, we ain't getting food stamps in this house. I'm going to work. I'm your provider through Christ. And he... With the money he's able, he, he does sweet things with you. You guys go to the park together. You go bowling on family night. All type of stuff. And she's envious because she's never had a man like that. And she starts bleeding out. It becomes hatred. And you'll notice she'll wear certain clothes like Lusty when she comes to visit. Your cousin or whoever it could be. Neighbor next door. And, and she'll give your husband the eye. You know what I mean? Same thing, brothers. If a man tries to, like, dominate when he's in front of you, when you're with your wife, if he tries to, like, undermine you, make fun of you too much, or whatever the case be, it's a bad sign, okay? Now, this don't mean you start accusing everybody. You got to use discernment. Now, we talked about envy when it comes to women being fruitful, envy when it comes to relationships. What about people that envy? Listen, let's say you're a brother or sister that has a business. You know what I mean? We have a brother that came into the ministry and, you know, he, he's got a few businesses. He's pretty successful. And a lot of people have envied him. And he's growing in the ministry. He's been just learning uh, what to get rid of. And he even sacrificed things out of his own business. And, man, that's an amazing blessing because he wants to serve the Lord. And, you know, me and him talked about that. And I said, brother, look, man, I know God already told me about you. You weren't handed all it is. You you were a statistic that the devil was planning on you being in a grave or in a prison. And you became a Christian. You weren't you weren't knowledgeable to know certain things. You, you know, you had to learn. And that's why you're in this ministry. But look at how you started with pennies and you worked your way up to have businesses. And now. You're now serving the Lord. 
So there might be people that are envious over your success, brother or sister. Sister, maybe you, you, you know, you worked hard. They don't know all the struggles. They don't know the tears on your bed when you was crying out to God, Lord, I want to get my hair salon up. Lord, they won't give me a loan at the bank. You had to work three jobs just to get enough money to get the building and get the license and get all of that. And women got the audacity in your family to be jealous and envious of you. But they weren't, they had no problem when you were struggling, sister. Come on, I, you know I got your back. Brother, you know I got your back. I'm going to stand for you righteous folks out there. People want to be envious of y'all, but they have no clue the, the humble beginnings. We're going to get into it. You know, there's men from time to time and women from time to time. They come into this ministry. Either they're already envious of my wife and I, or they become envious of us. And it's a shame because my wife and I don't think we're all that. We, I don't got a big head, maybe literally, but I don't got a puffed up head. I don't exalt myself. I love complimenting other brothers. I love encouraging other brothers. My wife loves encouraging and complimenting and helping any way she can for other sisters and vice versa. So people innocent like Joseph and above all Jesus Christ, the greatest example of a victim of envy. Oh, that's a good title name. I don't know what title to call this, but I'll get into some stories after. Not in huge detail, but enough for you to see why my wife and I are the way we are. Because of the battles we've gone through, it matures you, it humbles you, and it also keeps you aware. Not paranoid, but discerning. Jesus was very discerning wherever he went. Learn from that. Now, listen... You also want to write Proverbs 3.31. I like this one because it tells you not to envy your oppressor. Whether it's the job or whatever. Your supervisor, even if she didn't deserve that position and you worked harder, to her, harder than her and they gave it to her, they gave it to him, brother. Do not envy those above you. Because a lot of them, they ain't even saved. So you're richer than them anyways, even though they make three times a week what you make. And the enemy will try to whisper in your ear. And the presser sometimes will envy you. You don't even know it. Look at Haman. He envied Mordecai. Hated him. But yet he was at a position higher than Mordecai in the physical. But he knew Mordecai was higher in the spiritual. Man, that would have been a walk away right there. One of y'all walk away for a brother. Come on. Now, this one is huge. This one, I'm telling you, is liberating. Go to Proverbs 14. We got to read at least a few of them. Go to Proverbs 14 with me. I want you to see this. See if you can beat me. You probably already beat me. Proverbs 14. I want you to go to verse 30. Look at what it says now. Okay, here it is. It says, a sound heart is the life of flesh, but what? Envy, the rottenness of the bones. Did you know that envy can create sickness in your body? Don't envy and that's why sometimes you'll see your enemies looking very unhealthy because they're envying you and it's rottenness to their bones. Do you know that that demon of envy has hindered my wife and I from healing people in the name of Jesus Christ? Because when they came around, they were secretly envying us or envying other people or they were just an envious person altogether. And because of that, God said, I'm not healing her. I'm not healing him. I'm not healing the family because they're so envious I'm going to heal them, and the envy is going to make them sick all over again. Do not envy. It's a temptation now. That spirit will try to whisper. But you have to be standing firm and say, no way. Let's talk about something. Let's take a brief intermission. Get yourself a bottle of water. Okay, I'm kind of like laid back today as a waiter. <laughs> I'm not passing you water. You on your own. Think of Paul when he was trying to describe the body of Christ. He was really trying to tell them, you guys are like little babies. No wonder so many people turned against Paul. He was so real and bold. And because the world is phony and people love to pretend and fake, they don't like real people. Real recognize real. Come on, sister, brother. A lot of fake people, when you're real with them, they, they literally... Turn to an enemy, they cut you out of their life and talk about you simply because you told them the truth about who they really are and that they need to repent. 
<laughs> but Paul seen the immaturity like a little kindergarten class. And he's like, look, in Corinthians this is. He says, what is this? You guys are the body of Christ. If one of you is the eye, and one of you is the ear, and one of you is the mouth and the nose, and so on and so forth, be grateful for who God made you and stop envying each other. Why is I hear the ear is envying over the eye and wants to be the eye? Why is it the nose is envying over the ear? Saints, if people would realize, and it's, you know, it's sad because it offends God. Do you not know that the Lord Jesus Christ has feelings? He's, he's grieved before. He's wept before. He's laughed before. And he's gotten angry before. Right? When he was on the earth. And the Bible says that God is angry with the wicked all day long. But listen. How do you think Jesus Christ feels? When he created you the way he wanted to. And he has gifts for you. Well, let me not use you as an example. And he has gifts for a certain child. A man or a woman. And that person is so busy envious over someone else's gifts. They never stop to go to him to even see what he had for them. Ain't that a shame? So if you're the ear, sister, be the best ear you can be. Never mind the eyes. You're not going to be the eyes. Let the eyes do the eyes job. Let the mouth do the mouth job. You listen. That's your job is to listen. Brother, your job is to smell to sniff out discernment stop trying to be the mouth and that's a problem in so many ministries and that's how a lot of division comes it's envy you know what it stems from it stems from lucifer but we're going to get into it now we, we, we're just kind of working our way down okay write this one down isaiah 26 11 that ends envy brings shame okay now, okay, you're going to write this one down. We're not going to read this one either. You're going to read it on your own time. Lord willing, amen. Ezekiel 35, 11 says that hatred is manifested with envy. And we're going to get into that process. One of the best examples is Selena. Sadly, she was not a gospel artist. She was so gifted. This is years ago. Some of y'all might not know who that is. Do you know the woman that murdered her was her number one supporter, her biggest fan? What happened was sometimes people, if they don't take control of something, admiration, if not leveled off, can turn into a factuation. If not leveled off, can turn into something psycho, create envy. If they feel like they're not appreciated or they're rejected or whatever the case. And then it can become murder. Oh, this is this a really important word, saints. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Now, this one we have to read. This is Romans 129. Romans 129, okay? Now, the interesting thing is you got to pay attention to the, the order of what he talks about. There's a reason he men of God and, and they they read things in order. Watch, I'm gonna show you. It says being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness. So all of those things ultimately will cause someone to be filled with envy. What's the lesson learned there? If if it says full of envy, that means there's measurements of evil. Measurements of pride or measurements of envy. And if you discern envy in someone, you want to talk to them before it gets filled because they're much more dangerous at that point. If you feel envy attacking you, praying fasted out of you, okay, God loves you. He knew, that's why he died for you on the cross. He knew you would have struggles, but you can't hold on to them. You got to get rid of it. You got to let it go. You got to lay it at the cross. Get rid of envy before it becomes filled in you. But look at this. Oh, this is such a good word. Lord, I love you. Look at this. Full of envy. Now watch this. What's after full of envy? Murder. Did not tell you that. Debate, deceit, malignity, and whispers. We're going to talk about this order now. I've noticed in my experience, and my wife, she would definitely be able to speak the same experience, okay? 
but me as a man, there's multiple types of men that come into the ministry. And there's so many men that have been such a blessing to the Lord in this ministry, to my wife and I. And we have growing leaders right now in this ministry that love the Lord. They're not perfect. They got areas they're working on, but they are on the side of the Lord. But saints, from time to time, and this is where I'm talking to the pastors out there, ministers, uh, bishops, uh, shepherds. You guys have to be careful with this, and you're probably already aware of this because you've been victim of it. If you're true and serve the Lord, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Did you know that there's usually two main, two main type of groups that come into a ministry that have a desire to lead or teach or have a position? Paul talks about it, and I'll put the scripture on the screen. He talks about how there's one that is sincere and they just want to preach the gospel, but the other does it out of what? Envy. They do it out of pride and self-will. So let's talk about this. For y'all that are on the conference calls, you know on Wednesdays we've been dedicating for quite some time now growing leaders the opportunity to give messages and encouraging sermons led by the Lord. And the reason that we do that is because this ministry is not about me. Jesus Christ is exalted here. And just because he appointed me as the main shepherd under him, he's the great shepherd. Remember, Jesus commanded us to be shepherds over the flock. Right? And my wife is such a help me, not only for me and the help in ministry needs, but she is such a blessing to so many women. So many women are blessed after getting off the phone with her and she prays for them. And saints, my wife prays a lot. She prays for y'all. She loves you. But I said that to say this. The brothers that are growing leaders, okay, that have sincerity, they're going to get stronger, Lord willing. They're going to get more mature, Lord willing. And in time and through seasons, through learning experiences, there will come a time when God tells me, appoint them their own flock. Remember, and of course, Moses is far greater saints, right? But when we use Moses or Jesus or Paul as examples, it's not because we're puffed up and we think we're equal to them. It's because they're examples for us to follow. Does that... Pharisees in the back are like, eh, no, it ain't. No, that's what it is. We, we highly respect, above all, Jesus Christ. We respect Moses and... and, and Examples of Moses, examples of Paul, and we look at their life and say, wow, okay, Moses at some point was given wise counsel, wow, to assign 70 men to help him. Do you think all 70 of those men were the same? No, but ultimately, patiently, they worked with all those men that would help with the people. Because it was too much for Moses. But I'm sure there were some of those men, just like the Bible says, and I'll put the scripture on the screen, and we're going to talk about Moses very shortly. They said, who has made you ruler? All of a sudden, something changed. When now they felt like, oh, I, I got a little position of authority. Now I could be someone that y'all come to instead of Moses. Because their heart wasn't right. But there was ones that were sincere, just wanted to obey the Lord and please God and help his servant Moses with the burden. Doesn't the Bible say share each other's burdens? So the growing leaders in this ministry, but saints, that's not always been that way. We've had men come into the ministry with ulterior motives or they changed through time and became envious. And it would be men that I had to tell them, look, bruh, I cannot do whatever I want because you want it. I have to obey the Lord. If he's telling me you're not ready, you're not ready. Saints, I'm not going to get into the detail because that's a testimony my wife and I would love to do. Saints, it took over eight years 
for God to finally tell me, now you're ready to start ministry. You see, my wife and I worked together in ministry, but me as the head, he spoke that to me, obviously, right? But guess what? When my wife and I would hit the streets, that was ministry, but not ministry as in being a shepherd over people and helping them and being there and praying for people and teaching dinner table messages to thank God thousands of people. It That just wasn't dropped on me a year later, saints. For many years, we had to be patient and wait on God. And for many of those years, it was a very big struggle in the natural realm. But we were so rich in the spirit realm. But going through the struggle made us humble and appreciative. But guess what, saints? God had to train us up, build us up in the word, in the Holy Ghost, learning examples, learning from other people's mistakes, learning humility, learning all of these things, going into battle and doing war against Satanists, Luciferians, false religions like Islam and the rest, Rastaf, all of them. You would see us, I would be battling. With Muslims in the parking lot of a supermarket. Battling with false prophets in aisle 13 of Walmart. Just building up maturity. And God said, finally, now you're ready. Now you, that, that title shepherd, you, I couldn't give you that in the beginning. No, you were a foot soldier. You had to work your way up the ranks. And now saints in this narcissistic last days, look at how many men and women just override all of that. They don't got no experience. They don't study to show themselves approved. They're not living even holy. They don't even fear the Lord. But they open up a YouTube channel and say they have a ministry. You want to be under a man that has no experience? A man who's deceitful? So I would tell certain men, and obviously they walked away from the ministry because they had ulterior motives. I looked a, I looked a, a, a man in his eyes, he was in this ministry, and he was a very lovable person. He had a funny sense of humor. I love people that are funny, you know what I mean? I'm a laid back guy, but in this last hour, my wife and I have to be very stern, and we cherish the times we get to have that joy and laughter and be around certain saints that love the Lord and we can actually do that with them. But you got to be firm, saints. Ain't time to laugh and clown. But he, he was, he's a special man. But what a rebellious person. He was so deceitful when he moved down here. He finally moved down here. He was secretly smoking cigarettes, lying about stuff. And I would approach him. And say, bro, why are you lying? Like, I know you're lying. Just stop lying. And, you know, he got married. And, and his wife, who was also in the ministry, started smoking cigarettes with him. I'm like, what is wrong with you? And instead of them humbling themselves, they puffed up because it was something in him. You see? There was envy. Envy is no joke, saints. And of course, they walked away from the ministry. Saints, do you know how many people fell away when Paul would build up people and start up groups? And look at in uh, John chapter 6, how many people walked away from Jesus Christ in one day? You cannot judge a ministry by that. Judge it by the fruit. Judge it by the word that's brought forth. And do you feel the presence of God? And do you even know what the presence of God feels like? Wow. Oh, I love this word. But that's just an example of envy. He kept asking me, I wanted to, I want, I'd like to have a YouTube channel. And I'm like, I don't know about that. You preach kind of like all over the place and I'm not trying to offend you. Because I say that. My wife and I are like that. Like, we're very honest. But we'll let you know, look, I'm not trying to offend you, but you're not ready for that. We've had people that want to sing, but they're living straight up devilish. And we'll be like, no, no. No, and I'll get into that in a minute. But yet we were encouraging. I would encourage that man. And this is this so many tests. I could give you just a handful, quick 30 second breakdowns of what I'm talking about with the two different type of men. You get men of integrity, a lot of men that are in this ministry, still in this ministry, showing themselves approved and I thank my wife and I thank God for all of y'all men and women that have shown yourself to be loyal to Christ and integrity standing in this ministry 
and walking, walking in the battle and, and fighting in the battlefield with us. But the ones that flake out, you'll notice a common trend. A lot of times it's pride, it's ego, and it's envy. And envy turns into something else. And what happens is, listen, it's tragic, okay? There are men that will come into the ministry. And even the, even the beginning, they might be actually sincere, but they're hiding their sins. That's why I give a lot of credit to local pastors. Because the reason why people from a distance usually are more grateful they honor the ministry more and they would just love to drop everything and move to Atlanta to be a part of the ministry locally. But the reason why my wife and I warn people, we say, hold on, before you sell the house and the dog and the car and come down here, I, you better be ready. Because if you're prideful, if you got some religious weird thing you picked up from other creeped out ministries, if you can't handle rebuke, if you can't handle military affair in the spirit, if you can't handle a chain of command ordained by Christ, then you're going to walk away. So I'd rather you just stay home. But if you're someone who loves the Lord, remember the Bible says rebuke the righteous and they will love you. So if you're righteous and you can handle correction and you know what it's like to go through boot camp, you know what it's like to not just see the smiley side of Wally, but you might get checked and I might have to yell with the authority of God because you don't stop sinning in a certain area. See, there's a difference. But the reason why, saints, you need to pray for pastors, especially because... God allowed me to operate in the role of a pastor, but that's not my calling. The calling that he put in my life is to help pastors out. Look at them and show them where they're wrong and where they can improve. I want them to have a stronger ministry. I'm not one of these novices that want to be the only ministry on the planet. Everybody look at me. It ain't about me. It's about Jesus Christ. But my point, listen to this carefully, is a lot of pastors... When you deal with a flock locally, it's different because you're now seeing them. You're seeing their weaknesses. You're seeing their sins. God reveals it to you. My wife gets dreams of people and then we approach them. Sure enough, it was right. Brother, are you still smoking? And, and Or sister, are you struggling at home with your husband? You being a Jezebel at the home. And then on Sunday, you're... <laughs> See, when you're in a part of a real ministry, you can't play that with us. And it might slide for a little bit. Your act, a person might be able to act good, but eventually God will always reveal. See, patience reveals deception. And that's why local ministry is hard to keep. Because people are, we're in a rebellious generation. You see? And the, just one example, the man I was telling y'all about. And I, I would call him after I said, all right, fine. Fine. Because, listen, it's not about asking permission from me to do anything. No, but when it comes to things that is going to have a representation or a reflection of this ministry, which is Jesus's, of course I can't just be stupid and be like, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. If a guy comes into the ministry and he's got the most amazing voice, he dresses very nice, and I just throw him into the leadership of praise and worship? No. No. What if he's a nasty pervert? Now he's permeating a pervert spirit while he got a beautiful voice like Lucifer. You see what I'm saying? And men would get offended when I would pull them aside. Whether it was my wife or with another growing leader to bring correction to them. And even there were some men that would be like, yeah, yes, 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 man of God. But in their heart, they're like, who does this guy think he is? Who does he think he is? He thinks he's all that. No, I don't. If I, if I am called by God to bring a correction to the flock and the flock can't handle it. I said to the man, the Lord is revealing you are smoking cigarettes. And finally he confesses. I said, you better shut down that YouTube channel. You're not allowed to have a YouTube channel representing this ministry. You you were a good actor, but that ain't going to get you into heaven. You can't act at the throne room of God. And and it build up in him that that anger, that envy. Because saints, look. 
I've told people before, the worst of men, not worthy to even have a gift from the Lord. But once Jesus Christ, in his great mercy, washed me in his blood, the same thing goes with my wife, who has many gifts. Guess what happened? Immediately at that moment, we became worthy because it was not our righteousness that made us worthy. And I tell people all the time, look, man, chill out. God allowed me to be born short with a big head, crooked nose, borderline Viking bull legs. And you want to be jealous because I can preach the word of God and see mysteries only because of Jesus? Can I? Can, is it okay if I have a gift where insecure religious men come into the ministry and get envious and get mad and hateful because they can't do it? Do I boast in myself or I, do I give the glory to God, brothers and sisters? Because the Holy Ghost chooses to operate through my wife and I during conferences and demons are coming out of people and people are being healed. Do we say it's us or do we point to Jesus? Do we expect you to say, oh, I'm Jesus. Worship me. Be honest. God chose to bless this ministry with much power and anointing and mysteries revealed. And saints, sometimes when men come in, they get envious of that because they have a desire to be a great preacher. They want to be a great one. They want to have a flock. And if I tell that man, what are you doing? And, and that brother's just one. We had another brother. And the funny thing is, is these are the same men now noviced up, trying to act like they got their own ministry and they're so out of order. And they're not right with the Lord. Saints, in this last hour, people have learned to adapt. Children of the enemy or children of God who are rebellious and will go to hell if they don't stop. They've learned how to live sinful, but be a chameleon and look godly on camera. Wow. There was another man who came in same spirit, wanted to be some great one. And... I caught him lying on his YouTube channel. And see, saints, you don't know the behind the scenes things. My wife and I not only labor for people for the love of God, but we also encourage and help any way we can. I help these men with a logo for their YouTube channels and helped encourage them and gave them advice and warned them and even warned them. Don't get puffed up. You're not a leader yet. You're a growing leader. You're still under watch. And that's good, saints. Listen, if you are in a ministry where the head shepherd is reckless and doesn't pay attention to who he assigns positions of authority, get out of that place. And that's how children end up getting molested by a creep because the pastor didn't discern. Huh? Wow, this is so good. And just like this other, other, uh, I don't know, I can't, how can I call him a brother? He's a rebellion right now. But just like that, this other man, he played guitar. And do you know that the Lord even paid for his studio time to encourage him to do music? That's called, that's called my wife and I are someone who doesn't get envious of someone else's gift. I don't play guitar. Y'all know I, I was doing rap music and singing melodies and hymns. And, but I, I, my wife and I, my wife is the same way. A sister came in the ministry who sings. The Lord from my wife's own pocketbook bought her a guitar. And she ended up being such an ungrateful witch. People nowadays, saints, make sure Second Timothy chapter 3 is something you read at least once a week so you understand what generation you're living in. Because, see, just because you live in the presence of God and you love and you're pure in a sense where you don't deliberately want to hurt people, you're not out to try to, you just want the best for people, stop thinking everybody is like you. Okay? Some people are very wicked. With a Bible in their hand. And I told this man. I caught him lying on his YouTube channel. Where he would take sermons. From no named YouTube channels. And then re-preach it. And act like he caught a revelation. Or a, some kind of great sermon. So me and another growing minister. Called him up. 
It straight up said, don't you dare lie to the Holy Ghost. Are you stealing sermons and then preaching them? Because that's what God revealed. And he started crying on the phone. Yeah. But you know what that, you know what that showed me, my wife and the other minister? It showed us that he was envious towards me. He wanted to be a preacher that has mysteries to the point where he would go online to try to find sermons that kind of was like, you know, mystery type sermons. Saints, that's so dangerous. And I, I gave him mercy because God has been merciful to me. And the man ends up walking away from the ministry because of correction over and it happened again, by the way. And he calls me, he says, I got to leave the ministry because the ministry is too real. That was his own words, saints. And the devil attacks real ministry. The devil don't attack like lukewarm ministries. And, and I just, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to fight with the devil. This was what this man said. Saints, this man now, somebody had reached out and told me this man, I even let him play music on Thursday night conference calls. Can you imagine how Paul felt? This happened to Paul way more than you think, saints. Can you imagine this man now has his own YouTube channel? He's on his second marriage, right? And the odds of him, because his wife was a, a, she believed in the Lord, but she had a mental issue. She was always paranoid and thought the Illuminati was after to get her. They fought all the time. He would call me. I hate my wife. And I'm like, bro, what are you serious? You want to be a leader and you can't even love your own wife? See, those were the secret rebukes that were not done. You uh, people didn't know about that. I would tell quietly because I don't want to, I, I, you know, you got to be careful how you rebuke people. Sometimes you got to do it publicly, but a lot of times it was quietly behind the scenes because you love that person. You just want them to change. So at this point, the odds of that man actually lawfully being allowed to have his second wife is very slim because that way he can't say she's not a believer. And the odds of her committing adultery on him, unless he's going to lie like he was deceitful anyways. So that means that this man puffed up. Left the ministry because he realized you can't fake it over here. You can't pretend, you little weasel. You can't do that over here. Saints, you got to know this is real. These people are like weasels and snakes and they're good at acting and pretending. They learn to adapt. You see how dangerous it is? He's not qualified to have a ministry. Do you know this man said on one of his videos, there's no more teachers needed. There's no uh, teachers needed. There's no more need for shepherds. We're in a different age. Saints, let me tell you why this man said that. Because he's a rebellious man. He left a ministry that had order, a chain of command. He couldn't handle correction because of his pride. He had envy in his heart, even though we were so kind to him. Right? Now watch this. Let me show you how foolish that is. Think if you dropped off your baby. Let's say you have a child at a daycare center. You go in, you sign the form. There's three workers, adults in the room. And there's a whole bunch of children from age months old to seven to no, like five years old. And as you say, OK, see, see you at five, you're in your car fixing something on your phone and you look up and all three of the adults shut and lock the door and they start getting in their cars and you get out of your car you like yo hold on, hold on i only seen three adults like is so is there another adult that was in the other room or something like who's there to watch those children that don't know no better and they go oh no times have changed there's no need for uh, babysitters, teachers, or daycare workers anymore. I mean, <laughs> the times have changed. There's no, see how stupid that is? Because babies put anything in their mouth. That's like baby Christians will put any doctrine in their mouth. Teachers are needed now more than ever. But that's what I mean. These are envious, rebellious men that will walk out of a real ministry and then become an enemy. When I wasn't even pursuing to be an enemy with these people. But I wanted to share that same thing with my wife, women that she would just be honest with because a, a gift that's so strong in her is God gives her discernment in dreams. And I have the gift of dreams, too. But it was like when we got married, God, like dumped it onto her double portion. Amen. 
and she will contact women and be like, sister, the Lord spoke to me and I, I got to talk to you. Are you struggling with this or that? And the woman would be prideful and says, come on, don't lie to the Lord. Just just be honest, okay? We're, we're not here to stone you. We want to. Pr and then the woman will have some type of way with my wife. You see how crazy it is? Like, where are the righteous people that actually are grateful for leadership and shepherds that will tell you the truth even if it offends you? Wasn't that Jesus? Did he not offend people with the truth? <laughs> Make your mind up. What kind of shepherd do you want? A fake one that doesn't care about anything? Doesn't care if you get taken by wolves? Or a shepherd who's very prudent and keen and says, oh, you, you're, you're not qualified to be a leader. There's no way I'm going to have people listening to you. And do you know that's the same thing I tell growing leaders? I tell them, hey, look, I pray you make it to the end. We're here to help you grow. It's your choice if you want to be a man of, of integrity or not. But men have left and men have stayed. It's your choice. Same thing with women. There's women growing in this ministry. So I needed to give you some examples, okay, of when men puff up. A lot of times there's a root of envy. You see what I'm saying? So... We carry on here. We're moving on. And I really want us to focus on Moses. Because in Psalms 106, let's just go there real quick now. Okay? Psalms 106. Look at what it says now. In verse 7. Okay? Hold on. Let me get there. It says, In Jesus' name, our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the... Hold on, 16. I'm bugging. Hold on. Go to verse 16. It says, they envied Moses also in the camp, and Aaron and the saint of the Lord. You see that? So they envied Moses and Aaron in the camp. Now, this is what y'all, this is where, sister, you, you need this healing word. Brother, you need this healing word. And I need you to know that just because you're not a shepherd, okay, just because you haven't been called to have a ministry, does not mean you are not being moved, used by God mightily, okay? Remember, one plants, one waters, God gives the increase. When y'all bring people into this ministry to Christ, we take over teaching and everything, but you still labor for them. You helped with that mission. So we honor you for that. And we are so grateful for you. That don't make me better than you because I know mysteries. And because when we do conferences, demons come out. When we command them in Jesus' name, we're in this together, saints. And could you imagine what gifts God got in you that he just wants you to stir up and focus on? And envy will blind you to what gifts you have. Oh, that's good. Write that on a shirt. Now listen. A lot of y'all actually lived a foreshadowed type of example of Moses' situation and didn't even know it. Think about this logically. And, and you can read in Numbers, I think it's 11, is it? Let me see. Yep, Numbers 11. Read that on your own time. Think of this. Moses gave up so much, even risked his own life to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt by the power of Christ. But did you know that as he went down and he was amongst them, okay, this is why pastors go through it because people that are amongst shepherds, they get spoiled by the kindness of that man. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm not going to get into that, but that's why people that are in local groups that stay, they're very special. Because they stand through the fire. Because usually local people that walk away, they try to sow discord with other local people. <laughs> so you got to overcome that, that whispering spirit. We're going to get into that in Romans uh, 1 after. Back to Romans 1. But listen, this is going to encourage so many of you brothers and sisters. Listen. Moses brought them out of Egypt by the hand of God. And down the road in the desert... They so many of them turned on him, got envious of him, said, who are you to be a leader over us? Who made you the leader anyways? Can you imagine that? This man did so much for them, fought the powers of darkness to get them out of bondage. Oh, y'all see where I'm going with this? Sister, brother, how many of you have been almost like a type of Moses? That don't mean like exalted or we like Moses, but just take a walk with me. 
and you went into the Egypt of their life with the power of Christ and you delivered them with the power of the Lord from a certain Pharaoh, maybe a Pharaoh of depression, a Pharaoh of addiction. Oh, that's so good. I, I got to do at least one walk away. A Pharaoh of anger, a Pharaoh of lust, a Pharaoh of whatever, deceit. And as you're walking with them out of Egypt and now they're serving the Lord with you, they change in the desert. Oh, that's so good. Wow, that's a title. They changed in the desert. Didn't they change on you, sister? Didn't that girl that you labored for, you prayed for her, you were the one there for her for the love of God. When no one else, you were the one on the phone with her for three hours praying over her and encouraging her in the name of the Lord. You were the one fasting for her. To, you were the one that was showing her scriptures and building her up through Christ. He gets all the glory. But as y'all walk together in the spiritual desert, she became envious of your gifts. She became envious of something that you have and it made her turn against you eventually because she was not godly enough to admit she had envy. Wow, brother, pastors out there, you've labored and shepherded for certain people, certain type, not, children, not the anointed ones because they stay. They love God. They fear God. They know they need correction. They're willing. They're humble. But the ones you labored for, Brother, you fought for him. You fought for them. You dedicated so much time to them. Blessed them. Not even just in the spirit, but helped them with bills when they needed it. As a real man of God should. Because it's all the love of Christ. And through the desert, they conspired against you as a group. How did that make you feel, brother? Well, I'm here to tell you to get that wound clean in both you brothers and sisters to know you graduated to go through a situation like the powerful men of God and, and women of God have gone through. Look at what Jesus went through. No one's greater than him. See, it went, it happened with Moses. So, brothers and sisters, when you reach out to people and you labor for them and you help get them delivered by the power of God out of an Egypt and, and loosened from a certain type of Pharaoh, a, a Pharaoh of addiction or whatever it could be, if they turn on you, God forbid, in the desert, do not let it wound you. Don't let it hurt your heart. Guard your heart, the Bible says. Pray for them and forgive them and let it go. If they want to go away and envy and begin a little crowd and conspire against you, they will have to answer to the Lord because deep down they knew you were a real woman of God. You are a real man of God. You never profess to be perfect, but you're a real man of God. You're a real woman of God. I feel like weeping for y'all because I, my wife and I know how it feels. You've been wounded. And I'm here to tell you that God has, has, has been pleased, but hopefully you handled it the right way. And if you didn't repent... Some took it personally, got offensive and moved in the flesh. No, pray for those who hate you. Pray for those who, who accuse you, who are jealous and envious of you, who hate you. That's an amazing analogy. I'm trying to wrap this up, saints. Wow, it's so good. Yeah, let's just do it. Go back to Romans like I was saying. I told you we're going to go back to Romans 1 just real quick. I want you to see this now. Remember in verse 29 where it said, Full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and whisper. Do you know this order happens like clockwork when certain men come into this ministry and try to be close to me? They'll tell me they love the Lord. They honor me as a man of God. They'll never turn away. There'll be a little remnant of something in them. But if they're not willing to get it out, it's going to grow and fester. This is actually the order. Remember, Jesus says if you hate somebody, it's as murder in your heart. Didn't he say that? So look at how genius Paul really is. Envy will produce murder. That don't Now, sadly, some people actually do get murdered. God forbid, but a lot of times it's murder in their heart towards you or they want to murder your reputation. They want to murder your, the, you know what I'm saying, to paint a bad picture about you to others. And shame on y'all that take heed to dirty lips. And, and you want to hear what they got to say, but you won't stand for the righteous people of God? Who are you then? <laughs> that would never fly with me and my wife. Nope. But 
What comes after the murder? Debate. One thing I notice is that men that get jealous of the gift that God operates through me. And if you really look at it, why would I puff up over the gifts that God has in my life? First off, these jealous, envious men, they don't know what I've been through. They don't know how many hours I've spent in my prayer closet. They don't know all the times of fasting and sacrifice. From the minute I gave my life to the Lord, it was not the same calling. It was very unique. I trembled at his presence. I would study for hours. I would be in my prayer closet for so many hours. <laughs> Supernatural things would begin to happen and I had nobody to tell because who would believe? Because people don't believe the supernatural. And then God gave me my wife, thank God. And then we started to grow together and seek the Lord. And when people got the audacity to try to turn against me and my wife over envy and jealousy and all of that. Because they want what we got but they're not willing to go through what we went through to get it. Huh? It's the curse of Adonijah. And we'll get into that in a minute. This ain't, this ain't nothing we can boast about. We only can heal people in the name of the Lord because of the name of the Lord. I can only show you these mysteries because the Holy One reveals them. We can only cast out devils because Jesus says yes. So why would I boast? And if I'm not boasting, if I don't exalt myself, how dare people turn against an envy? <laughs> and besides, God wants to cast devils out of people through many servants. He wants to give mysteries and preach mightily through many servants. But because so many people are bitter and cold. And they're busy on what other people have and envy. They don't allow God to work through them. And it's a vicious cycle. Vicious cycle. But the men that I've noticed that have come into this ministry. That secretly envied. For whatever reason. I believe mainly it's the gift of revelations because a lot of pastors don't have that. They preach regular and there's nothing wrong with that. But this is one of the gifts that God gave me and I will be a hundred with you. I, I <laughs> see how I'm talking because I'm so like thankful. I love this gift because I love Jesus. And the more I can know about him and the mysteries and where he's hidden in the scriptures, that's why he gave it to me. Because he's seen I love him. The father seen I loved his son. And I love his son. So some envious novice, narcissist, liar who ain't loving Jesus. He's living a life of sin. And he gets envious because of this gift. Well, if he would love Jesus, if that woman would love Jesus, maybe she would get a gift kind of like you, sister. Oh, wow. Wow. But look at the next one after full of envy and murder is debate. They always end up trying to come back around and challenge me. A lot of times those same envious men that leave and start up their own channel, they will debate and try to challenge me and tell other people, oh, he's got false doctrine. But they'll never come through and sit at a table and show me where the false doctrine is. You want to know why? Because they know the Holy Ghost is the one who gives the doctrine to this ministry. And they'll be kicking against a bushes of thorns. That's why they do this. While this ministry through Christ is casting out devils, they're on YouTube doing this. Oh, you don't know Wally like I know him. I've met him. And blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, where are you healing people in the name of the Lord? No. Okay, uh, do you cast out devil? No, I don't, I don't do that in the name of the Lord. Do you get revelations that deliver people literally by the word of the Lord? No, but you don't know him like I know him. Saying, stop listening to people by words and judge them by their fruit. <laughs> so you're not deceived, okay? But they tried to debate. You see the order? And then it goes into whisper. Just like the order. They start backslide. They start backbiting and seeing who weak-minded, feeble people. They could try to get them to incline their ear to their nasty lies. To try to turn people away from the ministry. Saints, this is real. Envy is so wicked. So wicked. Now, we got to bring this together. We got to wrap it up. And the thing is, is in Titus chapter 3, verse 3, Paul says we were envious at one point. So never be ashamed that when God delivered you from envy, you tell people the truth. 
I was envy at one point. I, I struggled with envy in one point in my life, but God delivered me. I was ignorant. But when the truth is brought to you, now there's judgment with that because you have to make a decision to humble yourself and admit you're wrong or, sadly enough, go down a dangerous path. So, anyways, we're going to move on to the second tier of this, second level of this message as we're actually bringing it together. I didn't want to give you a thousand stories because I actually, saints, I could give you so many testimonies. Of, you mind if I, I'm going to get a little, little hood with you. I'm going to kind of relax my legs. It's late and I'm tired, but I just had to do this, saints. And some of y'all like, I would put my feet up there too. <laughs> y'all tall brothers now. Y'all tall brothers wouldn't have been able to do that. You see what I'm saying? Now, listen. How you handle it is very important. Could I say I've always handled it the best I could? No. Sometimes it's hard. It hurts. Especially when you grow to love those people. Despite what they do, and that's where I'm going to bring up Judas after. Despite what they've done to you, you still love them. You know what I mean? And you know that past the envy, past the hatred. and Because a lot of times when they walk away from the ministry, they'll for some reason think they're rejected. But yet they left the ministry. You see, you, see, you see what I'm saying? The devil will deceive people, saints, I'm telling you. And if they would humble themselves and repent and come back and admit what they struggled with, they would be forgiven. That don't mean, I'm going to be real, some people ain't meant to come back to the ministry. I, I'm just being 100% honest with you. But they would be forgiven and some would be allowed back in. That would be up to the Lord. But I just want to give you a few. My wife, same thing. What I was mentioning earlier, there was a sister that recently came into the ministry. She came from overseas and she married another brother in the ministry who was someone that had potential. We were allowing him to have an opportunity to preach. I think he did like maybe I think it was like twice on a Wednesday because we have a lot of growing leaders that rotate on Wednesday because we do Q&A, which I, I do. But I give an hour by the grace of God, for people that want an opportunity to give the saints a message. And I love that because it, it shows that it ain't all about me. Uh, look, I'm not Jesus. I am a servant of Jesus. I'm not some exalted one. The name servant means humble. You know what I mean? It's someone who's humble. That, there's a reason God gave me that title. And I'm so grateful because I've always wanted a name. Because my music name is something that carried with me for a long time. And I faded out. I was like, Lord, you didn't call me to be a full-time musician. You called me to be a servant of the Lord. He said, the servant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, wow, okay, Lord. But the Lord was so kind to this, this couple, this man and woman. This is one more example I'll just show you. So kind to them. Saints, there's a great wrath that comes upon people that do wicked to true people of God. You know how it says, touch my, not my anointed? You got to realize that applies to all of you now. Not just great prophets and apostles. Technically, if you are walking in the Lord as a saint, you have the anointing of Christ. Therefore, if you are pure hearted and you do good to other Christians and they're ungrateful, they wipe their lips like some nasty wicked person and turn their back on you and render you for evil why do you think jesus says don't give jewels to the swine those are christians that can appear to be normal but they're pigs inside they will take what you give and then still run turn around and attack you watch this the lord like i said Bought this woman a guitar to encourage her to do music. Even though my wife's a musician, she encourages other women to be, be musicians. You know why? Because that ain't in us. We celebrate people's gifts. We celebrate people's victories. We've had people come into this ministry straight up struggling. We pray over them and say, Lord, they're showing signs of hope. Bless them, Jesus. And all of a sudden, he'll get a better job. All of a sudden, they'll get a house. All of a sudden. But then they forget. They forget the good that God's people did for them. God's leaders did for them. Just like the people did to Moses, who obviously Moses is greater than us, right? But listen, this woman had this envy towards my wife. And this is what's crazy about it. It's like, stay in your lane. You know what I mean? Saints, you got to be grateful for the gifts God gave you. 
Because God gave this woman the gift of music. And God gave my wife and me and many of you gift of music. But we should never be envious or jealous of each other. Right? But listen to this. Do you know this woman, my wife out of the kindness of Christ in her heart, even paid for her studio time through the love of Christ to encourage her, hey, do music, sister. But guess what God revealed? And there was up, there was two other ministers, a brother and a sister. My wife seen it first and he seen it first when he was around them on another time that she was abusive towards her husband, like literally, like physically and verbally. And now the man that left the ministry with her because she gave him an ultimatum. She said, you either leave the ministry or I'm leaving you. Do you know what that's called, ladies? That's called witchcraft control. Because she knew he had no reason to leave this ministry. He was, he's a very special man, but he was struggling with the Ahab spirit. Right? He's, he, he knew how to put on a show when he would hit the streets and preach, but he was very childish inside as well. He couldn't handle things. But he, he was growing. He was developing. You know, saints, when in a ministry, you got to be patient with people. You got to be patient with people. No different than if you, you grow plants and you got to be patient with their growth and be gentle as their little, you know, sprouts or whatever. Do you know we approached I approached him and he confessed that she was physically hitting him. Now, saints, let this be a lesson learned. Now, I'm not giving out names because there's no need. But if you know, I really don't care because they're rebellious and they're out of line. And I'm warning you, don't follow these fake people. They're fake for now. They need to repent, period. I'm saying it from the throne room of God, not out of a personal area. The scripture shows them to be false, just like Jesus said. Do you know, we approached this woman and him at their home to defend him and said, how dare you, sister? Now, we love you. The Lord loves you. But you're going to be singing songs like, ah, and you're one of the most wicked women that's ever come into this ministry, beating on a man who struggled with uh, verbal abuse where he came from. Knowing he's not going to hit you back, taking advantage, verbally abusing him. And this woman hardened her heart, wouldn't even repent. It was my wife and I and two other growing leaders. But first, my wife and I came alone. You see, we, that's all that scripture. We went to the man in his wife's house alone. Then it happened again. And he confessed it. He said, she's still hitting me. She even says she hates me. And this is a woman that wanted to lift up as some great musician in the body of Christ. Saints, you better be careful just because someone has a gift. Do not be blinded. Do not be blinded. Discern them. And on the second time, she hardened her heart. He gave me a call. He was avoiding my calls. I only called him once because we're busy. But we don't forget the lambs. We don't forget the flocks. I text him. And then I text him a third time, maybe a week later, I think it was, or something like that. I said, hey, bro, obviously you're avoiding me. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what's going on in that home. And obviously, I said, obviously, bro, you're not answering for a reason. We're going to pray for you. Because we knew he was stuck in a house. With a Jezebel spirit. And the reason the Jezebel spirit was growing. Is because he had an Ahab spirit. And that's when he let me know. He said what do I do. She's telling me if I don't leave the ministry. Because she don't like the fact she was corrected. He even admitted she was wrong. He admitted she was a Jezebel. He said what do I do. I said bro we're not, we're not going to do that with you. You're supposed to stand against the Jezebel in her to save her. If you bow your knee to the Jezebel in her, you're going to continue to bow your knee. Anytime a real man of God comes in your life, she's going to fight him. Because she don't want that Elijah spirit around her. And she's going to castrate you more. And you're going to live a vicious cycle and go. And it's going to be terrible. Brother, you should not abort your wife and abandon her. You should stand and stand up to that spirit and fight for your wife. You know what he did? He left. You know what he did after that a month later? Started his own ministry. <laughs> Saints! 
I only tell you these things so you know how dangerous it is in this last hour. That ain't funny. I'm not telling you this out of spite. This is wicked. And do you know he drove off in a vehicle that Christ gave him through the ministry? <laughs> wow. People are so ungrateful and so wicked. Keep putting on your show, you fake believers out there. You're not fooling God. You have a time to repent and get it off of you so you can actually be honest and real. It's terrible, saints. It's terrible. Anyways, let's wrap this up. So we, we going over this, right? This fanas, this envy, resentment that someone else is blessed and that person can't stand the fact you're blessed. There's so many of you sisters. You got beautiful voices. My wife. So many of you brothers have gifts. Don't, isn't it nice when you're a real person and you celebrate people's gifts? You help them go further with their gifts? Doesn't the Bible say you're supposed to want more for your brother than for yourself? Don't the Bible say that? And nobody can charge us unless they're liars. My wife and I, with the love of Jesus Christ, and I hold my hands like this. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. We try to encourage people. We try to help people. Whatever their calling is, their gift, we want to be servants to help that calling go bigger. But we also have to show correction and watch to make sure they're not growing abnormal with cancer in the spirit. And if they're not willing to receive that, they're willing to receive the gifts that, that is given from Christ in the ministry. They're willing to receive all the time given to them. They're willing to receive all the things, but they're not willing to receive correction. What a shame. Now let's wrap it up. This is where it really gets heated. Matthew 27. Okay. Matthew 27. Now look at this. And saints, that was just three examples. What, maybe three or four examples of people that had envy and just... It manifested in the hatred. It manifested in the debate. and manifested in the whispering. It's, it's so sad. And you know, what's, you know what's amazing? Is although a lot of people that do stuff like that is not wise for them to come back to the ministry. Although that's God's. He, he's the one who gives that final uh, decision. But remember what Paul said about the man who deserted them with Barnabas, he said it's not wise for him to come back. He has to show, it's like Adonijah, and we're going to get into that in a minute, but what's so sad is even to this day, even with all the whispering and the hatred and all of that, my wife and I love every single one of them, but saints is part of the gospel. If you can't handle it, then just chill out and just play the regular role of a believer who prays a lot for people, tells people about Jesus, but if you can't handle people Growing with you and then turning on you when you're like a Joseph to them that corrects them. They want to throw you into a well and murder your reputation and lie about, lie about you. Then leave it alone because it's going to happen, saints. Being real with you. I'd rather tell you the truth so you're ready. You guard your heart. So that way you, you don't get wounded because a wounded spirit is a bad thing to have. My wife and I have been wounded by l growing to love people that only turn their back because they either went back into the world or they were too prideful to have authority tell them what to do in Christ. I didn't choose this, saints. God chose me to be a man of authority. Remember, the unlearned men were chosen. <laughs> men that you would not think were qualified were chosen. I know some people don't like that I wear a hoodie. I talk a little bit normal to a sense where it doesn't seem proper to them. My beard. Saints. He chose me, he chose my wife, he chose so many growing leaders in the ministry, and he chose so many of you. Who cares what envious Pharisees got to say about God choosing you? If God chose you to do something, or if not chosen, he called you to do something, what is it to them? You do what you're called to do! Oh, this is so good. Let's finish. I feel there's like a burning on me right now. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 27. Verse 18, it says, for he knew that for envy they had delivered him. The Pharisees, they love to get praise from one another. They love to be the center of attention, but yet they didn't love to serve God. Isn't that something? So here they are. Now, also in Mark chapter 15, 10, it's a similar verse. Just watch, read it on your own time. But I want you to envision this. These Pharisees 
all of a sudden, their whole life is stopped when this great man appears. They don't know he's God yet, or maybe they did and rejected it. But this almighty God in the flesh, this son of man appears. And he has so much power. Demons are coming out of people. People are being healed. Something these Pharisees never could do. Think about where I'm going with this. this is, I love this message. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I, I, even I needed this message. We all need this message because people can try to wound us with envy or envy can try to attack some people. Listen, they wanted to be praised. They wanted to be lifted up as great men from God, but they didn't have no love for God. They studied the word, but it was dead letter to them. They didn't live in the spirit. They weren't able to cast out devils and heal people and nothing like that. All of a sudden... This Jesus Christ of Nazareth is casting out devils and raising up the dead and cr raising up crippled people and feeding the homeless and doing everything they were supposed to do. Do you know what that did? It convicted them because they didn't care about the homeless. And when they seen this Jesus Christ, who we know who is, right, having so much love for them and having more authority and power than them, it made them envious. They wanted what he had, but they wanted it for their own personal gain. And that envy mutated into murder, and the Son of God was crucified for all of us. Let that sink in. You notice a trend with people that will, people that will slander ministries that they come out of? From now on, right? Not even just this ministry. For any of you men of God that have ministries, you women of God that reach out and you do evangelism work for women and your, your elders that help out women like my wife labors and does. For now on, when you hear people trying to slander a real ministry that does cast out devils in the name of the Lord, they do really actually preach the word of God and live what they say, and there's mysteries revealed, and God shows mysteries, and there's people being healed of sicknesses and diseases in the name of Jesus Christ, you stop and ask them, hey, are you like the Pharisees in the days of Jesus where the only thing you could do was yap? Or can you cast out devils like the man you're accusing, can you? Because he does it in the name of the Lord. He doesn't lift himself up. His wife doesn't lift herself up. Can you heal the sick like them? Then I'm calling you out as you have something in you. You probably had envy. You got rebuked. You left the ministry. And now you found other people that got rebuked and left the ministry. And your little clique is now trying to slander. You need to shut your mouth, you lying devil. And that's how you have to be with people, saints. You don't have time to incline your ear to evil lips. Listen to this. I'm trying to help you now. These Pharisees were so envious of Jesus. All right, let's move on to the book of Acts. This is phenomenal because in Acts chapter 7, just real quick, Stephen is a very special man to me. I, he got his own message coming by the grace of God. But verse 9, it says the patriarchs moved with envy and sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with them, with him. Do you know what really happened here? I don't think people realize this. The reason why the Pharisees blocked their ears and stoned him is because the sermon was convicting and cutting them. He was saying the same way they were jealous of Joseph because of his righteousness, because he was not afraid to tell them the truth about their weaknesses. They hated him and it manifested because of envy and it ended up becoming murder. Even though they weren't able to murder him, they wanted to murder him. You did the same thing to the Messiah, the greater Joseph. He came from his father with a coat of many colors. He came to correct you and show you the error of your ways like Joseph did to his 12 brothers. But no, you were too proud to receive the light and you hated him because of envy. Just like, see, that's what it really was. They couldn't take it, saints. They couldn't take it. Now, this next one is something that comforted me. Because I was like, Lord, I find it interesting that almost every time we do conferences, there's some kind of slander that comes out. I'm like, what is this? Watch this. Because I thought it was just like a principality or something trying to turn people away from the truth. Y'all ready for this? You're going to love this. Acts chapter 13, verse 45. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. And spoke against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. There's your answer. The same way the Pharisees would see crowds gathering to Paul because 
they were drawn to the light of God in him. Whenever we are called by God to do a conference, which is a gathering, a crowd, the jealous, envious Pharisees are so angry that people are actually drawing into the light. They try to lie about us on YouTube. They try to say lies and blaspheme. Can't you see the same exact thing happens to us in this last hour? <laughs> Some of you ministers out there that have done conferences that you really true love the Lord probably happened to you. But now you know the mystery on why you get attacked. Whenever big moves for God are being made, expect the envy to stir up those who secretly watch you. Listen, do you know that most people that walk out of a real ministry that has videos online. Watch this now. I'm not even going to speak just on behalf of this ministry. But including this ministry. I can almost guarantee you. Those that walk out because of rebellion. They didn't want correction. They were envious. And became, that envy and jealousy turned into hatred and debate. And ended up being whispering. And they went off. And they said. And they tell people. Did you hear I left the ministry? Did you hear? First off, that's what you do. You call people around to tell them that. Like you're some great one that your discernment should cause them to follow you back to Egypt. <laughs> Saints, wake up. Watch out. But I want you to see this. They, I, I can almost promise you, eight out of ten of them definitely still watch the messages. Why? Because they can lie. Because the Bible says envy will cause people to lie, it says. Right? They can lie. They can act like um, other men or me and my wife are not people of God and you don't know them like we do. And Right? Then why do they still watch the mess? No, let me talk directly to you wicked people that you know very well you were wrong. I'm talking direct. I'm moving everyone aside that are innocent. All y'all that are innocent, I love you. All y'all that love correction, all y'all that honor the Lord in this ministry and you respect leadership in this ministry and you know we're not trying to be exalted over you. Please y'all move aside for a moment. All y'all in the back that walked away from Christ in this ministry. Because if Christ is filled in this ministry and you walk away, don't say you're walking away for some other. You walked away from this ministry knowing it's Holy Ghost filled, knowing you have seen the power of God move. You have been moved by the word of God in this ministry. And you walked away because of pride or envy or ego or competition or whatever it was. But yet you can't stop watching the messages. You want to know why? Because as wicked as you have become, that little bit left inside of you that you better have, you better repent before it disappear. That little bit of child of God still left in you knows this is real food in this ministry. And you know the power of God is really in this ministry. But you won't admit it because of pride. You better repent. In Jesus Christ's name. Okay, everybody. You can come back. They're in the back anyways. Just stand in front of them. Eat little spies. Saints of God, I had to do that. Because isn't that weird to you? They'll walk away. They won't help in any way. They'll tell people negative about the ministry. But they secretly watch still. <laughs> I don't know. You got a brain. You tell me what that is. Now, there's three examples before we, well, four really, that I want to paraphrase to save time where we bring this together and pray, saints, because so many of you that have been wounded by people that were envious of you, whether they try to mess up your marriage, whether they try to uh, turn the boss against you because they were jealous of your growth in the job or um, in the church, they try to turn people away from you because the pastor honored you as a honorable deacon and they didn't like that or whatever the case be. A good example is in Esther, Haman envied Mordecai. Remember that. And the lesson to be learned here is Haman was at a higher position in the natural realm, but yet he still envied Mordecai. Why? Because Mordecai was higher than him in the spirit. Where this is going to help some of y'all, some of y'all get treated wrong by people over you, whether bosses, sometimes it's people in ministry, they see a light in you that's bigger than the light in them or a boss will see your zeal is better than them and they'll envy you even though they're above you. You better watch for it.
but handle it like a godly man or a woman. Godly man or a woman of God. Yeah, that did, <laughs> you know what I mean. All right, go to the next one now. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. But in 1 Kings 1, I'm going to paraphrase it just to save time, saints, because, I, you know, you can't expect me to get this done in 45 minutes. It's, envy is a message people ain't preaching about. That's why you're excited for this. But in 1 Kings, Adonijah tried to steal the kingdom from Solomon. He tried to force himself into a position of authority and self-exalt himself as king. And he even found little snakes to be traitors to David, the king, priests that turned their back on David. And listen, envious people will always find a handful of people to turn their back on the pastor of a ministry. Don't, don't let that hurt you. But what happened was, thank God, that David had his people and Solomon was ultimately made king. But watch that mystery. Watch that sermon called the curse of Adonijah. It's barely watched. It's an older message. Uh, people just don't see it or whatever the case be. But it's similar to this message. But it's it's its own, ent it's its own entity. Okay. So the point is, is that these self-exalted men and women that want to exalt themselves into positions of authority or power, but God is not calling them. Now, that don't mean he don't love them. That don't mean he don't have a plan for them. But not everybody's called to be a shepherd or a teacher. And really, you should be terrified if you are a teacher because you don't want to be caught teaching the wrong thing. Why do you think I get so bold and I yell when people teach false doctrine? Because that provokes me to anger because it provokes my father to anger. Let's move on to 1 Samuel now. Just just real quick now. Okay, just to save the time. Now, in verse 18, I want you to see the envy impregnate King Saul. It says, and when it came to pass, let's go to verse, uh, let's go down to verse uh, 5, just to save time. And David went out with whoever Saul sent him. So David was obedient to Saul. You better follow this now. Right? And behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over men of war. And he was great, he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass as they came, David was returning from slaughter of the Philistines that the women came out of the city of Israel singing and dancing, meet King Saul with tabrets and joy and with instruments and music. And the women answered one another, watch this, and they played, they said, Saul has slain his thousands and David is ten thousands. You see the song now. And Saul was very wroth, angry. And said, and, and, and the saying displeased him, and he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousand, me they've only ascribed a thousand, what can he have more but the kingdom? Now watch what it says, and Saul eyed David from that day forward, envy crept in, he was jealous and envious of the popularity of David. There's a lot of you men and women of God, you didn't pursue to be nobody great. You know what I mean? You weren't trying to take nobody's throne. But what happened was your gift, your sincerity for God drew people to you to appreciate you and honor you. And other Christians who are envious seen that and was like, uh-uh. And they got jealous. Saints, there's nothing wrong with honoring leaders in your life, appreciating them, complimenting them, and showing them even elders are worthy of double honor, right? But you can never exalt them above God. You cannot lift them above Jesus. Do not idolize leaders in your life. Just be thankful for them. Show them honor. Be loyal to them. Show them respect. Be there for them as unto the Lord. But never, ever lift them higher than Christ. And always thank the Lord before you thank them. If you want to impress my wife and I, and you want to just thank us for being laborers in your life, say, I thank God for operating through you guys, and I thank you. That is the proper way to thank a leader. Now, for any of you leaders out there, 
and you like to be exalted. You like to be the Jesus in their life. You like to be lifted up. You don't tell them to slow down. Hey, I, I notice you're no longer complimenting me. You're kind of starting to idolize me. You as a leader, you're supposed to address that. Oh, come on, saints. I'm talking to some leaders out here that are struggling with this. Now, you can see this envy mutates in many ways, right? Wrapping it up, consider Judas. Notice that in John 12, in your own time you read it, when the, when the oil was broken over Jesus' feet, that beautiful smell, notice what Judas says. Why was this not sold and given to the poor rather than wasted on his feet? I mean, <laughs> to me, that's a little self-exalting. Like, who do you think you are? You want this wasted on your feet when it can be given to the poor? But Judas didn't care about the poor, the Bible says. In a way, he was trying to undermine the honor that was meant for Jesus. Oh, this is so good. You kidding me? That was meant to be put on the feet of almighty God in the flesh because he deserved it. So what you'll notice, saints, is one tactic of Judas's that leave a ministry because of envy or whatever the case be, or they're outside looking in. When they see the ministry loves God and they know the scripture says they are to respect the elders and the shepherds that labor for them. And they show gratitude and appreciation and they're always excited to see the leaders and they're always saying thank you for the last message God gave you. The envious Pharisees will accuse the flock of worshiping the leader, of calling the lead. Oh, you think that leader is Jesus? He's not Jesus. She's not Jesus. You see? It's a Judas tactic. They don't see the honor you're showing the leaders for their labor for you. You're not worshiping them, glorifying them, because the leader will always do what if they love the Lord? <laughs> Thanks, praise God, but all glory to him. It was his message, not mine. So obviously I know you thank the Lord already, so I'll accept your appreciation, but glory be to God. See, a real leader will do that. Number two. In Luke 22 and John 18, you see where Judas betrays Jesus. Now, mind you, he ate out of Jesus' plate. He went to Danny's with Jesus, you could say, right? And then he brings the, the wicked people to betray Jesus in a place that no one knew about, a place that was kind of secret, like a secret meeting. Let this be a lesson learned, saints, that... One thing the devil tries to do is send in people, whether agents from the beginning, which we've experienced, or people that he will let them sit as like a sleeper cell and then corrupt them with envy and jealousy and ego and pride to where they got to know you. They knew your secret places you meet. They knew what, they ate food with you. And now they try to tell people, no. We have been around them. You don't know them like us. I, Judas, am here to tell you that I ate off the plate of Jesus. He is not God. He is not who he says he is. I'll show you where he secretly worships. Do you see how wicked it is? Because the devil knows those people will think they have an advantage because they were around the leader. Saints, it's the oldest, it's one of the oldest witchcraft tricks in the book. Judas was so wicked. He, he betrayed Jesus. Now, I got a surprise. I got a surprise ending. And then we're going to bring it all together in prayer. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> Isaiah eleven thirteen. Are y'all ready for this? Come on, let's wrap it up now. We got, we got to go. And, and for y'all getting down here in the conference, Lord willing, uh, get down here safe. For y'all that couldn't make it, just keep everything in prayer, okay? Because I know there's some witches praying and their prayers burn up in the fire of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's name. So, Isaiah 11, verse 13. Are you ready? This, this one right here. You should have seen me. When I was at the kitchen table and the Lord was giving me all that he wanted me to give to you, I felt so excited. When he showed this to me, I was like, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Like a little five-year-old in Toys R Us. Watch this. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is funny because I legit be like that in the presence of God. 
It says in verse 13, The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Listen to this. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. You ready for this? When I read that, the Holy Spirit just started downloading the message. This specifically is for anyone that has turned on people that labored for them, turned on people that were there for them because they felt vexed. They felt like they did something wrong. And what's crazy about these last days is people are not righteous in their judgment anymore as far as the majority. Of course, the saints of God are. But you notice, sister or brother, all that the Lord threw you, I like to say it like that, even though you did it, right? All that God threw you has done for that person that turned their back on you is like a million pounds of stuff. And five pounds of offense causes them to walk away from your life. You know what that tells me? It's probably good they walked away. Because in this last hour, Jesus said, Brother shall betray brother to death and sister to sister to death. With the mark of the beast being implemented, who do you think they would betray? If they're willing to walk away from you over an offense and forget all the good you did for them for the love of Christ and Christ through you, you don't think they wouldn't sell you down the river with the beast system at hand? You better rejoice a lot of these people walk away because these are Judases. Now, sometimes Judases are meant to be around you to, to build character in your life. And sometimes you're meant to forgive people and let them back in your life. It just depends on the Lord. But here's the message. Are you ready for it? Here's the, the culminate. Bring it all together. It says that Ephraim is envious of Judah. Right? Are you ready for this? Now we need a walk away. You gotta go, we got to end the night with a walk away, saints. Y'all ready for this? Ephraim represents the students and Judah represents the teachers that labor for them. If you have an ungrateful spirit or you struggle, I'm telling you, this, this word is for you. Are you ready for it? And for people that have walked away from real ministries because of pride or envy or they got a religious spirit and they want to keep an image that they're perfect and they like judging everyone else. But as soon as judgment comes to them by the leadership, they run away so they keep looking like a clear, they just go into another ministry. This is for you. Are you ready for it, saints? Watch, watch, watch this. The Lord said to me, my son, what does Ephraim mean? Did you know Ephraim means fruitful and fertile? Wait, 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 wait. The Bible says in Hosea, you better catch this now, this is no joke, that Judah plows the ground, the field. Judah breaks up the hard surface for farming and for plants and crops. Did you catch it? Let me tell you what the revelation is. The Ephraim are like the people that had a Judah in their life, a teacher, men and women of God. Some of you labored for Ephraims. Oh, this is so good. You plowed their field. When they came into your life, they were hard. They had no fruitfulness. They weren't fertile. Their ground was hard because of all the sins they were involved with and religious churches they were involved with. But when they came into your life, they came into this ministry or real ministry. Jesus through them broke apart their hard surface. You labored, you prayed, you fasted. You went over their home when they had fights uh, as a married couple. You, you dedicated time from the love of God to break their hard ground, to make it fertile, to make it fruitful. And after Ephraim, after these ungrateful teach, after these ungrateful students that had so much labor by the teacher of Judah in their life, after the Judah done helped change their life, after they become fruitful after they become fertile they turn their back on the very one that was the reason they are fruitful now and fertile now all their fruits they started gaining of learning revelations by learning these teachings from christ 
the fertileness of saints of God praying for them and rebuking evil out of their life in the name of Jesus Christ. They forget all of that. They forget all the labor Judah did to make Ephraim fertile. Oh, come on! And they walk away and spit Judah in the face because they say, you vexed me when you correct. Let's go. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. The question is, have you been, have you, no, 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 don't, no, don't, don't hang up. Don't tell me you got to go to bed. No, no, let's do the prayer now. Have you been an Ephraim to somebody that dedicated time to labor for your life, for the love of Christ? Jesus operated through them to plow the field and break up that hard surface in your heart. And after your life started to change, you started to grow and learn. You started to learn the Bible from the Lord through that ministry. And because of what you feel you are vexed about, you walk away from Judah after he changed your life. Glory be to Christ. You should be totally ashamed. And for y'all out there that were Judas in people's lives through Christ and you labored for people and then they spit in your face because they were envious of you. Don't let that wound fester anymore. Get it washed right here and now. Y'all ready to pray? I'm going to do one prayer for all. That means those that struggle with envy will be first. No, no, no. Those that have been victim of envy. Uh, people that have hurt them over envy first and then those that and don't lie to the Lord just even if you maybe don't think there's a lot of it just do the prayer saints you don't got time to just act all clean and it's time to be clean y'all ready say it together now Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth son of the living God forgive me Jesus Lord I see envy in the world now people that wear the the, the facial mask. They're envious. People that see our, that we're not afraid of what they tell us to be afraid of. And they're envious of that because they're bound by fear and, and doubt. Lord, I see how people that are bound to the law. Wow. People that are back obeying the laws of Moses. Trying to get us to submit to a Sabbath. Trying to get us to use a name other than Jesus. They're bound by those laws. And they hate the fact we're freeing you. Lord Jesus Christ, if I have any envy in my heart, come on, saints, don't be prideful. Just say it. Lord, it, it, hold on. Do you know that David said, Lord, if there's anything unclean in me, take it out. So you humble yourself. Say, Lord, if I've ever envied over someone else, whether it's a marriage or their, their blessings or their gifts or their prosper, whatever it is, Lord, I repent, Lord, for ever envying. And if there's still any envy in me hiding, Lord, take it out of me, Jesus. Take hatred out of me, jealous out of me, debate and slander and whispering out of me. Jesus, I repent. I shouldn't be jealous and envious of others. I should be wondering in excitement what you have had in store for me. And I'm sorry, Lord, that that was ungrateful of me. I declare right now that I reject the principality of envy away from me right now. You unclean spirit of Phanas, leave in Jesus' name. I reject every demon that comes with the group called envy. I don't, and the Lord put a watch around me, put a wall of fire that envy cannot overcome me, never. That I won't envy over the wicked if they prosper. I won't envy another person if they have babies and I don't. I won't envy someone on the job that just got promoted. I won't envy a pastor or a man or a woman of God because of the gifts and the calling of their life. But Lord, I will cast down imaginations and live holy. There it is. Wow. And Lord, I pray for those people I've hurt because of envy. I pray they get healed in Jesus name. And help me not to be deceitful, to be honest with you and honest with others when I'm struggling. Not to be ashamed to admit my wrongs. Thank you, Lord. And finally say this, Lord Jesus Christ, heal me from any wounds that were created, whether in my spirit or anywhere in my being, from people that I grew to love, but they were secretly envying me. They blessed me outward, but they were cursing me inward. They complimented my marriage, but they were cursing it on the inside. They said I'm a great person of God, but they were hating me on the inside because they wanted what I have. But Lord, if only they would know what is in my hands is yours. It ain't mine. 
Lord, I receive my healing from everyone that's ever hurt me, betrayed me, stabbed me in the back, tried to kill my reputation like they tried to kill Joseph, that tried to kill my integrity, how, how I represent you, Lord. They despise those that are good. They're spiteful and haughty and proud and envious. I don't want to be in that crowd, Lord. And I pray as many get saved as possible. And I forgive all those that have hurt me. I forgive all those that have spitefully used me, wiped their lips and walked away as if, as if we were nothing to them. Lord, I forgive them, Jesus. Now, I know you still got to bring judgment and deal with them, but I forgive them, Jesus Christ. I pray they repent before it's too late, oh God. I pray they actually remember all the good your people have done for them that they've turned their back on. Because they're really spitting in your face, Lord. And Lord, I declare by the blood of the Lamb to be healed of every wound of anybody that's ever hurt me betrayed me, Aban there it is, abandoned me like a Demas who abandoned Paul. Paul didn't deserve it, but it was part of the gospel. Lord, help me to embrace persecution. Help me to embrace Judas's that may come in my life. Lord, Judas ate from your plate and you knew who he was. Lord, wow. Cause envy to bow its knee to you in me. That I never fall weak to it and I never fall prey to that tactic anymore. I walk and I'm, cause me to be joyful when others succeed in your body. Cause me to be joyful in others' gifts and talents that you have given them. And even when my enemies prosper, I don't want to rejoice. I don't want to be... I don't want to be envious, but I pray you will break them to make them and save them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare my healing by the great and good Samaritan right now. He has washed my wounds and closed them. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Wow, how awesome was that? I could have went on and on, saints. I mean, I got so many testimonies at times my wife and I have been wrongfully persecuted and hated on and all because of a childish spirit called envy it's like kindergarten two children fighting over a toy you know saints nothing we have is ours anyways so don't exalt yourself and don't envy it's that simple okay but i'm 20 years in the lord telling you this you know i had to learn i had to learn well over 15 years ago i had to learn you see so we love you guys so much and thank you for being in the in the ministry and by our side in this fight. We're running out of time. Just study. Read your word. Fast often. Pray without ceasing. Forgive right away. Don't hold grudges. Respect. Love everybody. The Bible says we're to love everybody. The Bible says honor all men. Okay? Saints of God, just show love to everybody. And if you got to be honest, if you see something growing in somebody, you can't tell me you love them and you're not willing to tell them what's wrong with them. How dare you let somebody grow in sin and you don't warn them? To me, that means you don't love them. And, and, and for you pastors out there, that means you might lose some congregation when you're honest with them because they're not expecting that. And sometimes you can get too close to the congregation where all of a sudden they think they're buddies with you. Before you can be friends with congregation pastors, you better hear this advice. They always have to know that before you can ever be a friend to them, they have to always remember you're a shepherd for them. And the friendship can never override. That's, that's a whole nother sermon. Let me go. I got to go, y'all. We love you so much. In Jesus Christ's name, be on the lookout for other messages. Do not, do not forget, go into the description box and subscribe to our other platform, saints. Don't be foolish. We plan and hope this channel will stay up as long as it can, but subscribe for the ones in the description box. And also, don't forget, you visit the website at least a few times a week because any videos that YouTube does not allow will be put there from another platform, Lord willing. Saints, pray, pray, pray. There's a lot of things happening right now. And I warned you, around election and around, not election, what's it called? The inauguration or whatever. Pray against any plans of the enemy. I'm telling you, saints, okay? Don't take nothing for granted. We love you guys. All right, I'm out. In Jesus Christ's name, bless. People them want 
me to just die. I see many people them want me to collapse. I see many people they don't want me to prosper. But I me tell them that I'm made in heaven. You know this as Christ is the Almighty. I am a soldier who no made in heaven. I never looking back. I just I like a nigga. Me will survive. I will survive. Oh yeah, I will survive. Taking over, Jesus taking over, I will survive. Missing again, I will survive. Oh, get a youth, I will survive. Mm, God taking over, Jesus taking over. Missing, I see many people, them want you to jail. I see many people, them want you to suffer. I see many people, they just want your business to collapse down. Yeah, okay, I see many people, they don't feel right for you. Kenya. I see many trouble who no come you away. Tribal war people rising against each other. People will mash it up and all of them they want to kill. Me tell them the fact that it's a fast fire bun. Never should you just a kill your brother and sister. Me prophesy out to this island. Kenya, me say one thing will happen to your mother. You will survive. Kenya, great. You will survive. Africa, you will survive. Shall survive in Jesus' name for sure. I will survive. I will survive. I will survive. I shall survive in Jesus' name for sure. I will survive. I will survive. 